absolutely fantastic news. Fantastic news. Phil Gormley stood down. Um, I have no idea how he managed to remain in office. And for everybody out there, you know, everybody must be listening to this. For that man had that complaint raised against him. Every single legal challenge that has came on anybody in Scotland and of a criminal nature, led by the police service of Scotland, ha is illegal. It's illegal. You tell your lawyers the now. Sack your lawyers even because they'll not go with us. Sack your lawyers and say get your custody is no lawful. When there's a point of legal custody, right? or a legal challenge. Within that legal challenge, if there's anything that can be deemed unlawful, what proceeds after that's no lawful. Right, so they went ahead, and they picked through a police station that quite likely or not has not had an inspector in it. It's been an area inspector overseeing these police stations. Now, for the 1st of April 2013, when the Police Service Scotland took effect, um, and these procedures were implemented and put into place, it basically caused a, 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 a serious issue as to whether a police constable could affect the officer constable right across Scotland. To which they can't. No one can. There's not, enough, there's not a constable in Scotland that can affect the full office of constable because he's restricted this 2026 plan and the common purpose issue at all. But getting back to the main feature here, going back to Rendon Brown's current procedure, fourth edition, uh, when it's speaking about the aspects of the, the legality of the police, when they have got legal charge and they have got legal force, um, it speaks quite a bit. And it led me on to Preston cases also that I read away back in oh, 1987, 1988. Um, I 1987, 1988, we spoke about the Civil Government Scotland Act, 1985, 1986, and stuff like that. And that hadn't been on 1988, but I was speaking about that. I was talking about the Civil Government Scotland Acts, which implemented the powers of the police. It was also some of the statutes and acts that came out through the Police Scotland Act in 1967. And this was, these were appellant cases at the High Court, which was speaking about, rough, basically, from, from, from memory, um, where the police could affect proper service, where they couldn't, right, and when it wouldn't be. And one of the main aspects was, was there was a, a case years ago where the, the head of the police, I can't remember, the chief constable at that time, because um, this was years ago, and it was deemed that because this man had a complaint film that he couldn't stand in office. And the fact that he had stood in office uh, threatened every, the, the, everything that the Lord Advocate was basically doing. But even then it wasn't the Lord Advocate's office, it was something else, I can't remember. But it was all called, it was all royal and everything, eh? But um, getting back to the main point, since the complaint was raised against that man, there's no custody in Scotland that's legal. So every warrant is unlawful. I'd, I'd, I'd advise everybody to raise a bill of suspension immediately on the warrant number um, because the, as long as the Chief Constable had a complaint against them and, and, and he was failed to be replaced, they failed to do this, they failed to do that, the Scottish Ministers failed, uh, the Police Authority themselves failed because every single one of the Police Constables, females, com local commanders, Chief Constables, Chief Inspectors, Inspectors, Sergeants, every single one who went and officiated their daily duties, working as constables, had no lawful authority and they knew it. If they didn't know it, they should have done it. Um, they had no lawful authority. So the Police Service of Scotland, which is a corporation, effectively has been running illegally as a business since the complaint went against them. And I'm going to serve the paperwork now um, for persecution and torture by the state. It is definitely getting done. It's gone in Monday morning. Uh, we've got a terrible situation at Falkirk Police Station, but we can see right through them, and they fell right into the trap. They really have. They fell into this massive trap. Uh, try to regurgitate evidence against me and say that the last ten years is going to amount to you being mental, and we're going to do this and put Kimberly into adult protection. There's none of that happening. And the clever game of chess I've been playing for the last ten years has became been revealed this week to multiple police and last week. So they've changed their tactics. They've changed their plans. They've changed their movements. Um, the inspector at Falker Police Office has got a conflict of interest, a serious one, plus he's biased, prejudiced, and malicious. And I can prove that because of just his performance so far. And I've only spoke to him once in my life. However, getting back to Phil Gormley, glad he stood down. 
Um, he was only brought in for a day the common purpose thing and the common purpose training. And I know he's brought some misconduct charge and his bullying charge uh, is going to be coming down to a procedure that he's implemented under common purpose practice and standards. And there's people in Scotland who's just not going to take that. And when my hat comes off to the chief superintendent um, that reported this man. Seriously. And for the rest of Police Scotland, he's listening to what I'm saying because I'm fed up speaking to you and telling you you've got the office of constable there. It's a powerful office. I would argue that it was one of the most powerful offices in the UK and Europe. Now you need to start affecting the office of constable and lead it. Let this chief superintendent who led the, the complaint against Phil Gormley. You need to support that man. You really need to get that guy supported in every way you can and the steward you want to know how you support them is it's not going against the Secrets Act but you report crime where you see it if that's in the workplace you report it it's the only way you're going to clear up this, this country with me raising the actions that I'm going to be raising I will stop Brexit because I can argue and, and I think the European Courts the Justice and the European Commission is going to be definitely interested in the fact that they've been paying all this money into Britain since 1972 to give effect to the European Communities Act and various different things. And if you look at the European Communities Act, that's been lying in contravention by the UK government and then by the, the, devolved, the, the devolved executive, the Scottish ministers for 1998. None of them have complied with it. And you have no, the, the, the Office of Constable. You can preserve yourselves. You're the last um, almost anti erosive thing. And, and Phil Gormans came in and completely rode it away with Michael Matheson, Nicola Sturgeon's watch, 10 year SNP governments, 10, 10 year down the line of being a paedophile, violent and dangerous because he used guys, and I'm going to try to help you because you are just not seeing the clearer picture. I've led the last 10 years of my life to catch you, and I have. I'm not interested in the course what they've done. If it's good to be spoken about, it'll only be, be to be forgiven on a forgiveness document and never spoken about again. But the police in the primary divisions up to the 1st of April 2013 and certainly afterwards, right to this date, today, you've got an awful lot to answer for. An awful, awful lot. And if you look at the multiple attacks on us through first teams, social services, local authorities, tech all companies, pardon me, I can identify multiple, absolutely multiple contraventions in all different statutes and acts. Pardon me, but, psh, and you know I can, and so does the court. Everybody knows I can. But see the reason I keep chatting about the bit we use is because you're not getting away with what you've done to us and you're going to correct it. You're going to let the help. The infamy that you've created for me is the thing that's going to turn everybody. And I think that I've always said that the people who really know me and the people who support me in Kimberley and the people who's been behind us all the way, they're still there. And there are a lot more people there too. Because I've not turned everybody, they've not convinced everybody. If you've recorded the last 10 years of your life to prove that anything that you can conjure up against us is just an absolute nonsense. And I'm really behind Lord Carlaby about uh, Everybody should be, every office holder should be uh, revealing their associations and stuff. Right behind Lord Carlaby on that. So come on. You want to keep hammering members of the public like me to come along and help you? A member of the public has got to take the complaint, you can it yourselves. But we put advice, follow the Chief Superintendent, then be fear. Who are you going to be fear for? Who are you going to be fear for? If anybody's still in fear in any constable anywhere, then that's the person that needs to go. That's the person that needs to go. You know, whether he's like it or no, the police service in Scotland's going to hit the ground. They mean it was turned into a corporation, it was only done to hit the ground. Suggest to you there's going to be a two tier service. No, there's no. <laughs> there's nothing of the kind. It's going to be masks and guns, and if you fart the wrong way, or if you're knowing your house at a certain time, you know. But a step in the right direction was Phil Gormley getting removed from the office. Who knows, maybe it was part of a, a, a bigger plan. You never know. 
Hey, Mr. Gorm, I've done it personally against you at all. But I looked and seen what you done in England before you come here. Yeah, I've seen who took care for you in England. You know, I don't think Mendes would be pleased. However, what you done up here? A couple got in the shops in their car and acted on intelligence that were held at gunpoint. Who was the intelligence? Because the guy was ultimately off for a breach of the peace. Was that because he objected to getting off to the gunpoint? That there was no breach of the peace? If it was so much a, a, a breach of the Queen's peace that it needed a gun exceed, then you've got the place in town for home. Gun pointed at another guy again. Who's the constables that are doing this? Have they been on common purpose training? Is there any of the rest of your colleagues that's not been on common purpose training? They can see your colleagues changing in their behaviour. Maybe see them cracking up, not really quick, you know. They're fighting for their, their higher offices of constables, they want to move up the ranks. They've been brought up, some of these constables, they've been, if you burn, brainwashed, they're going to be polis. Then you've got hundreds of police who really have only been drafted in to make it look clean and sweet. And they disrespect to any ease, but Somebody coming for who I am, my upbringing is, but they get into the polls because I can't do much about it. But a lot of these are really naive. But then they join into the culture of secrecy and cover up. That's what's ruined the police service, Scott, that's what's ruined everything. You just need to maintain the officer constable and fight for it. Then I'll let them take it off you. If you see it being diminished and you think you can't affect Officer Constable because everything's on a delegated platform, then you report that. You can't do your job right. Because you swore an oath, and if you can't perfect that oath or perform that oath, then there's, there's, there's no lawful custody, there's nothing. The Lord Advocate's Office is knacker. And trust me. If I've got to go and find the legislation that I read in Renton and Brown's fourth edition, everybody, go and get it, read it yourself. About what would happen if the chief constable had a complaint against them, or if, if that was, you know, it's speculated, it's spoken about. So for every, I mean, this is a travesty putting this kind of information on the internet because there could be murderers and rapists and fucking all sorts out there. And I think the the probabilities have come down to these people will be rearrested. And uh, the ones that were fickle, nonsense, they wouldn't go through double the, the money to bring them all again. Or maybe they would, I don't know. Probably couldn't they? Because of double jeopardy. So rapists and sex offenders and I, they would get done again. Because of double jeopardy laws have changed years ago. Right, I'm going to leave it at that. I didn't plan on speaking too much. Us, we're prisoners here. We, we're getting hammered. We're getting absolutely tortured. But uh, that's, that's the point of genius, eh? The difference between madness and genius is the ability to emotionally deal with everything out there and jump out of here and then deal with it there. And just no matter what's going on in my life, I can still turn that way and have a really good laugh at Kimberly. And we can laugh at everything. Because we're safe in the knowledge of the evidence we've got. Some people would think they're less more dangerous that you're saying that. But we've told the police this for a long time, they just knew they're starting to pick up. Um, they shut down my Twitter account, took all the comments, they're going to try and say it's malicious gossip. It's no, it's, it's no slanderous anything. Because to bring a charge like that, first of all, they would need to do is figure out whether it is malicious. And I'm just coming to court with evidence to prove that it isn't. It? And that's going to open up a can of worms, so they're not going to do that. But they've got an investigation on me, try and put a Section 52 D order on me, um, which is basically. I'm a danger to myself in public because everybody else is saying I'm crazy. And you should see this, eh? And presently at this address, I've been a prisoner for seven months, right? And I went out the other day to intervene with the police. And the police seen the situation that was arising. And they sped off so they didn't need to get involved. And as I was trying to get back to my address, folks started shouting at me. That's now developed that I'm out running out into the street to my landlord, the phone landlords and everything, phoned everybody about it. I've had a few phone calls regarding it for people. Uh, I'm running out in the street and I'm shouting and bawling and swearing and I'm fucking screaming at women in the street. 
police came to investigate that, sat much the evidence. And ain't it true. So what you've got is ten years of the same people who we painted their fence, we've done everything for them. Go for them in the world. They couldn't even say hello to us the day Kimberly finished the fence. Couldn't even spend time in the game with Kimberly when she was painting the fence. First job I made, I said we will ask anything in our life. Do you want a guy with the turned the back on him? Because he turned and says to him, I'll pay you, I'll pay you, I'll pay you, I'll pay you. I'm the one money, I'm the one money, I'm the one money. And I went on for what, how many days, Kim? Quite a few, eh? Then she says, right, I'll tell you what, you buy the paint, you buy the brushes, and donate to open secret. And they all was open secret. It's a child abuse charity. That was it. Kimberly paid for the paint herself, brushes, everything. And that's the very people who were screaming at me, they haven't seen me for months. Because I tried to get the police to intervene, where they were actually doing the address, which was congregating outside the address as per usual, talking loudly. Derogative, try to get me to go. Yeah, what you said. Never done it. I've never done it in ten years. Don't I do it now? <laughs> and the police would like to have everybody to believe, and they're going to try and prove that I caught that I would do. Never done it before. He's elemental. What I've done is I played multiple games of chess and beat one them all, just to make the one move on the chessboard, which was the final move after ten years. And that's checkmate. Why did they still make it to go? Those still made to go, but made a move that they couldn't move anywhere. If they had done, I would have checked me then. We all had a deal. There's three meetings took place. I can tell you, I knew I gave these people my word that I wouldn't record these meetings, and I didn't. I even insisted on being strip searched, but they refused. But they had my word, and they took my word, and they accepted my word. And I can't speak about the contents of the details, or the meetings, or who it was with, or anything. It was quite high profile. And the extent of the meetings was, we was Elaine. I'll bury all this evidence. I'll go away and go home my life. I'll go after Kim. And that was agreed. I kept my word for seven years. One party kept her word for seven years. Broke it once, and then, then corrected it. The other party was getting torn on about us for day one and has done for seven years. And we've just got better at collecting evidence. As well as being a seer, I've got one hell of a forensic encyclopedic mind. I'd be a really good criminologist, great behavioural analyst, I see through everybody and anything. And all you people out there that know me, you know them. And that's hundreds of years. Because nannies are on drugs anyway. You've got families, you've got life, you've got businesses. I've got you involved with everything. I taught you about love, was it? I taught you how to love yourself. And then this was easy. But anyway, full gormly, please stand down. I just took five minutes to think about this. See, because of the complications, he's no only presented for the Lord the Advocate's Office for refusing to stand down. One of the reasons that he must stand down is because whilst he's still in office and a complaints live against him is he could impede justice because he's there to influence paperwork, manipulate it, shred it, produce it, and manipulate anybody else. So I think because of the problems that he's created by no standing down immediately and having access to everything that could impede justice, I think he should be sacked outright. I think it's too late to stand down now, Mr. Phil Because it is Mr. Phil isn't it? Um, it is. Mr. Gormley, you, you should just resign you, before you're sacked. Because I was waiting until you stood down before I started putting in complaints about you for refusing to stand down. I put complaints in multiple officers of that Falkirk police station and none of them have been suspended. They've all still got access to material, and not only that, they're, they're actively live just now to bring an investigation about me to manipulate stuff that they preempted themselves in the first place that will never stand a quality for quantitative test in a court of law. And any paperwork that they're generating, that person's going to be brought under oath. Because I've promised the police. And I promise you, Mr. Gormley, no, I didn't make a promise to you now. Because I, I see you at the game, I ain't your knacker. 
I really do. Why did you try to do that in Scotland? We didn't want London's ghettos up here. Didn't want your mindset, didn't want nothing. Scotland's always led by example. It really is. Courageous, Scotsman are. Very courageous, brave. Sometimes we appear to be absolutely fucking stupid. And sometimes that's just the way we play the game. But you have caused a, an array of confusion and problems for the courts, the Lord Advocate's office, and if you were ever acquitted on any investigation that was into you, that would need to be appealed immediately because of the length of time you spent still in office. How could we trust any investigation that went in your favour, Mr Gormley? That would be impossible now. It's an impossible task. Just like Falkirk Police with their investigations that I've tried to get gone into other people that refuse for tenure. Why? Because it would come back to the very corner of stone that implemented all this information into people's heads in the first place, which was the police. So I can't see how all these people can have so many multiple complaints about them. Inspector Anton telling me, oh, it's a big investigation, Aye, it's going to take a long time. And it's me and my sergeants working on it. Aye. <coughs> against me to counteract what I've been gain feeding away on Twitter. Because please, please believe me, I only took the social network in to let you scan what the hell I'm doing for not leaving us alone. And I am not putting my face forward without having backed up and prepared myself for every and every one single eventuality. And I'll point out the new, the Mental Health Commission was only set up for three days when I had reason to phone them. See, by the third day, I had the head of the commission phoning me back and spending so much time on the phone and the thing she was telling me would be an absolute asset to the commission. Because not only had I read the bills that produced the commission go through parliament, but I seen all the pros and cons and I gave her the benefit of this information after about an hour and 40 minutes on a phone call, where I'd done most of the talking. And that was against your policy what they were doing with Kim. I also spoke to the psychiatrist that was overseeing that and she was released immediately because they realised that I just knew too much, far too much, and all my analogies has been put on video. These cases have already been done on video. Should anything happen to me? But, um, aye, now you need to be sacked. Standing down is too late. Your adoption to stand down, you didn't. You've affected everything in Scotland. People in Grange have probably never seen a gun afford in their life, gone to the shops, suddenly, poof, guns down their faces. Folk that live in silly wee two places like Tamford Hill, guns in their faces. We get used to this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get used to it. Because whatever legislation has came through with the Scottish ministers that allow this to happen, I think it's probably the criminal justice lies in Scotland that makes it with a load of nasty stuff buried in that. But I, for one, I'm certainly going to try and have that heel act repealed. Because the Scottish Minister's never had the power of authority to legislate. So far away from um, European directives, protocols. You know, this kind of deal. I mean, you look at the lawyers that's moved into the Scottish Executive, and you look at the 18 years of the commercial success of your courts, you think to yourself, what the fuck's going on? Everybody's losing everything, we've got guns in their faces. And that's what I'm speaking to you has still got the Office of Constable for these very few last months that's remaining. Utilise the Office of Constable now. If you forgot what it's all about, go and read it again. A bit of wee swatch at the ancillary core training manual. You know, that'll be in the top of your wardrobe someplace. These are only the last people in Europe that can really save the day for Scotland and to shine as a nation. You know, it's like, you look at Corbyn's principles, eh, and it's like, he's just old school the way it used to be done, when the state owned control, when things were done right, when the state was liable. People are going to be held liable, there's got to be redress accountability, there really is. Remedy redress and accountability, there's got to be three elements to 
any action is coming against anybody for any reason. I mean, you look at what Lord Halsbury said in 2011 that any practice of commercial courts and any of the sheriffdoms wouldn't be lawful, and any legislation that would be brought forth to see forth this venture uh, would, would, would fall by the reason of one single act. So how are you doing it? The law society is there to protect us for arbitrary abuse. Where are they? That's there first and foremost. They're there to protect us for arbitrary abuse. They stop governments for arbitrary and arbitrarily uh, coming coming against us. And the court there is ultimately there for the sort of law of contract, but uh, ultimately to protect the poor. So if you're protecting the poor, you've got a whole law society dedicated to preventing arbitrary abuse. And that's what we're used to in this country. Oh, that's what it should have been. The new that we've got is lawyers running the show and legislating to bring along all this commercialism. There's good no place in Scotland anywhere. No one the people are suffering as much as they can. You know, it's like, this is unbearable. You've no idea the pressure we're under for 10 years. On a minute to minute, day to day basis. While still having to contend with the natural, oppressive nature of governments and everything, local authorities, and the police that everybody else goes through. We're going through that too. But in addition to that, man, wow. Incredible what we've had to put away. But there's one thing. There's no dodgy rotten fucking scum cop are going to call me a pedophile, spread the rumour about and try and keep it going for years and years and years and years. You really, most people get accused of that, they wouldn't kill themselves if it wasn't true. They'd hang themselves. Me? Blew me off my fucking head. I was ill for a long time. And all I could do was record if that's what I could do. I couldn't fight the court case, I couldn't fight things like... I mean, there's four, four landlords that just got away with murder, backed up with the police, and Hedy Muir. And that's going to come back to sting everybody, just because of the way it was done, in rapid succession, just blatantly. And the court backed it all up. I was too ill to attend, I was ill, I was eating disorder and nervousness because of the situation the police have created for us here. And at the end of the tether, we're nine and a half years before we get to here, or ten years before we get to here. Okay, it's mental. And what you've got through the Police Service of Scotland is try to clean up the act. I've met a lot of good constables. You've no idea the amount of constables I've met that sat in great. Broke down and said sorry. My, my sergeant's telling me to do this. They know it's wrong. Court staff. You know, other court staff. They've all got that. It's got that they all know. The only person that doesn't see me knows the sheriff, and that's complete willful blindness. And the thing is, he doesn't. It's made to know better than him. I mean, they become. You know, between years one and three, you didn't care what's going on. Between years three and five, you start taking the evidence that you've created for the polls to the court. For years five to seven, you start to realise, hang on, the court's fucking complicit in this. You're doing nothing about this. But year ten, you're scummed. You're knackered. You're done in. You've lost 12 addresses. And what you've done in that time is phoned multiple landlords, set up accommodation, you set up deals, you set up things with people so the police can go and invade and get it wrong and catch them with Dana. We were going about just doing things for the police to get involved. We date off the same telephone number and everything. Who can a sinker? We've never changed the telephone, in fact. There's no more telephone. <laughs> I didn't want anything. But, Mr. Garnley, you need to not only stand down, you need to remove yourself before you're sacked. Because you've impeded any investigation. There's no true... Um, I mean, in fairness to you, you know, it's, 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 it could be a malicious allegation against you, but I doubt it. Does that mean showing a bias? No, I've read a lot about you. I've seen what you've done. I read about your intentions up here. I also know that all the police voted for another guy. I think he was a, maybe a chief inspector or something in, in, in Edinburgh. I remember his face. 
I'm sure we've spoke to each other on a few occasions. The Scottish ministers voted for him. Everybody named him, nominated him, no vote, nominated him. I knew at the last minute came in and got the job. I knew exactly what was going on. You were going to absolutely decimate Scotland with the plan that you were coming up with. Or was it your plan? Or was it really a Russian spy in 1947's plan how to decimate Europe? It's a good plan, eh? Eh, uh, those are going to be here. I'm just delighted, I'm elated. I really am elated this man stood down. I know for these videos I'm going to get fucking hammered, but um, I'm a Scotsman. And if you ever bring me back into a court, as well as having all the paperwork and saw up here as well, it's already done in video. Um, you'll need to prove your jurisdiction because I am a Scotsman. You bring me any court. Prove your jurisdiction. I'm a Scotsman. Everybody needs to think about that.